Paul. You're going to tell us the secret to success in the music business or more specifically how to make your song a hit. If you want to make a, a successful rock recording, you must have... I'm going to ask you a couple more questions later, but let's start doing some dad jokes. Okay. And if I make you laugh three times, you said you're going to tell us the number one critical factor, the number one thing you need to do to create a hit record. Okay. And so musicians and producers stick around for this. It's going to be key information. We'll see. Paul, I'll send you a Dennis Ball t-shirt as a thank you for playing. And All viewers, right. if you laugh, please click like. And if you want to see more funny videos, click subscribe. Because it's a great deal to support the show. And we appreciate it. Sorry, Paul, I have to get it all in there, man. I gotcha. We're here, though, now with joke number one. Okay. Speaking of rock and roll music, Paul, hold it. Try not to laugh. My cat loves rock music. Do you know what his favorite bands are? <laughs> Ted Nugent? Fish? Oh, yeah. He also likes the birds. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. His, but his, yes, that's a laugh. And his guilty pleasure is rat. With two, <laughs> with two T's. With two T's, exactly. Did yeah. you see they did an insurance commercial recently? We do have a rat problem. I did. Well, they got to so, do what they got to do. That metal money ain't long. Yeah, I know. It came back uh, for a minute. Yeah. Uh, um, joke number two, speaking of rock music again, you know, you worked with the Pixies. Years ago, I went to a Pixies concert, man, and the drummer threw his drumsticks out and I caught them. They, uh, were, they were both of them? Both of them. They were actually delicious. Yeah. They were deliciously sweet. Pixie sticks. <laughs> Do you know why? Of course, because they, <laughs> they were, were pixie sticks. Exactly. I got, I got that one. Is that a laugh or no? Uh, I'll give it to you. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. That's two for two. All right. You're kind of low key, but you're still laughing, so I love it. Paul, people, joke number three. Okay. You know, people call me self-centered, Paul. Uh huh. Because you're a ball. But that's no, that's enough about them. <laughs> <laughs> All okay, right. that's another laugh. Good. I think so. All right. Joke number four. Oh, four. Okay. Joke. We're still. We have seven total. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go on. What's the difference with What's the difference between a shopping mall and a car? I don't know. A lot. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll put that as a no laugh. Well, you already got three, so. Joke number five. Paul, they invented a, you know, speaking of records, they invented a record needle that's so incredibly small, it's invisible to the naked eye. Uh-huh. I can't see the point. Uh, <laughs> all right. <But> I can't. <laughs> Give you a, we'll get a laugh okay. on that one. Yeah. Good, good. All right, joke number six. Do you know why rattlesnakes have rattles? No. Well, let me tell you, it's a cautionary tale. It's a it cautionary is. tale. And okay. it's like the tale is caution. All right, that's a no laugh. Good. All right, cool. Final joke. You've been very, um, a very good sport, Paul. Joke number seven is the final joke. The farmer was super upset, Paul, when the cows got into his cannabis crops. You know why? Why? The stakes were high, man. Incredibly uh, high. The stakes were high. Because <laughs> they are the cows of the stakes. Yeah, yeah. And it. when they ate the cannabis, oh, the they became an were high. Oh, high. Okay. <laughs> stakes were high. Okay, no laugh. But still, I think our final score was maybe four out of seven. I think, I think it was four to three which, decision. Yeah. Which is pretty good. I mean, yeah. that's about average. Yeah. And um, before we partake in your wisdom... I want to point out that you have a series of videos on YouTube you did with Paste Magazine. And you give some nuts and bolts studios tips, and they're pretty cool. I highly recommend that people look at them on YouTube. All right, so now, Paul, you're going to tell us the secret to success in the music business, or more specifically, how to make your song a hit. That's kind of a, a tall order, but... Oh. That's a very tall order. If, if it was that easy, if there was a secret, then every song I did would be a hit, and... Every song I do isn't a hit, but I will say that if you want to make a, a successful rock recording, you must have excitement. Excitement, that's the main thing. 
uh, rock, right. and roll is, rock and roll is about excitement. And so you achieve that through smashing drums, loud guitars, exciting melodies, whatever it takes. I can't put my finger on it, but when you sit there and think about what makes, what makes a song that you want to hear over and over, it's, it's exciting. And it might be even a slow song, mm. but it's got to be it's got to be exciting in some way. And too, ma- too often, people play me songs and they're just dull. They're just, they're not, they're not exciting. I don't, ca- I don't right. care about them. So, um, you know, if you, if you think back to that, you know, the Creep song, it's like, well, how did we get excitement in there? We put that noise in there that makes you go, whoa, you know, cock, cock, the sound of the guitar, right. you know, gearing up and then the big chorus. So, you know, think about all the songs. Think about Motown songs or any songs that you like. They're they're exciting. They're they're they 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 sweep you up and they pick you up and they and they 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 are they you don't. I'm not saying they all have to be happy. Um, you can make a right. sad song, but it's just got to be compelling. You know, maybe that's another word that. Yeah, like. and but, it's sometimes it's just a swelling of some strings on a Smokey Robinson song or exactly. a dropping in of a bass drum or a right. drum beat and a stevie wonder track or like you know like think about uh won't get fooled again by the who you know but it yes. builds up to this it builds up to this enormous scream you know that is like one of the great screams of all time and you you can't help yeah. but hear that and go yeah you know so i don't know you know the, the, yeah the, the hard part is how to do it but you got to do it you got to make it so that when your song comes on people go oh yeah yeah i love that song <laughs> And man, it's not that scream. Not only do you want to hear it, you want to do it yourself. Right, right, you right. You want to be Roger Daltrey and scream it, and people do. Yep, that's right. It's amazing. Or, here's another one. Like, I don't know if you saw that video that was going around a little while back. It was uh, the audience at Castle Donington, and they were waiting for you know, a big outdoor festival in England. And they were waiting for Green Day to come on. And so while they're waiting, the crowd was waiting. And I'm talking about there's like 100,000 people out there. And uh, they're playing Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, you know. And so right. the, it goes along. And they get, to part, they get to the part at the end where it goes, da 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 All of a sudden, that heavy rock thing comes in. And you could see the entire crowd start to go like this. And it was exciting. They were completely caught up in it, you know. Everybody was singing it. It was exciting. You know, so that's yeah. what you have to do. You have to you have to put that you have to make a song that isn't just some thoughts that you had or you know, I mean I hear like right. I, I hear these bands, you know, the sort of a shuffly groove and then somebody comes in going la di da di da and it's just it's like it's too laid back, you know. I wanna hear like the raspberries mm-hmm. or something, like the beginning of Go All the Way where it's like or even a Kiss song, you know, even Christine Sixteen by the by Kiss, you know, just right. Give me some, give me some excitement. That's the what I'm looking for. The cramps come to mind. I don't know why, uh, yeah. but the cramps come to mind for me. Google just Muck, it yeah. seems like there's so much. Yeah, there's so much urgency, and you feel and like, like oh, it's gritty, man. It's intense. It's, Every it's like, song. It's like on the edge of destruction, you know. Like that's what you want to. Like the best early rock and roll, like rockabilly and stuff, you kind of got to get the feeling that the band is careening down the road too fast, taking the turns too fast, and you know, yeah, stuff's just flying around, and you know, that's what you want to get. You want to get yep. that feeling, you know. So, and you feel like your mom wouldn't approve of you listening to the record because they're a bunch of degenerates. That was my life. You that know? was my life. I, I used to sit in my room listening to Grand Funk Railroad. And I remember when my grandmother came in and said, why, why does it have to be so loud? And I remember thinking like, well, it's not even really loud enough. You know, it's just that, yeah. that generation defining moment where you're like, you know, you guys are on the other side. I'm on this side. I'm on the rock side. So unfortunately, there isn't very That's... much. It's not around as much as it used to be, but we're trying to keep it alive. Mm-hmm. 